Good evening and welcome to Education Matters. Tonight is our College Financial Aid Program, our annual program to help parents and high school students jump into college. I'm Renee Shaw. We'll be joined in a little bit by Bill Goodman, but we wanted to start it off tonight's program with four high school students who are getting ready to make that leap and discuss with them their concerns about financing their college education. And I'm pleased to have on set with me tonight, Amanda Walstead, a senior from Knox Central High School, Keith Guy, a senior attending Scott County High School, Lydia Burns, a senior from West Jessamine High School, and Tasaji Douglas, who is also a senior from Scott County High School. And Amanda, I'm going to start with you, and I want all of you to pipe in on this, but I know you're probably having a lot of anxieties about making that transition from high school to college, uh, maybe financing and how you're going to pay for it is one of them. What are the other things that you're thinking about now that you want to have questions asked about preparing yourself for college and particularly paying for college? Um, definitely how work study works in college would be my first question. Mm -hmm. Because you would like to pursue that as a way to yes. help finance and to give you a little extra money. Anyone else have some concerns about what do you want experts to answer about how I actually finance this next journey four to six years or more? We have a lot of people uh, tell us to fill out the FAFSA. We get that a lot. Fill out the FAFSA. Make sure you're filling out the FAFSA. But what happens after we fill out the FAFSA? I know the mm -hmm. FAFSA doesn't like guarantee like it doesn't just give you money I know it's kind of a loan system and I don't really understand how any of that works yeah any of the rest of you to Saji or Keith um, well just as like she said the work and just balancing out your time and how, how do we as seniors making that freshman leap go to go do that as well it's just balancing your time out yeah. Have you already made preparations to Saji to have some plan in place to finance your college education? Absolutely. Um, coming from a middle class family, it's very important that you plan out your college education ahead of time. However, when you're applying to multiple colleges and you don't get your deadlines until April 1st or sometimes later, it's very difficult um, to have a plan in place that includes the FAFSA as well as scholarships, grants, and things like that when you're not even sure which college you're going to go to. Is it an easy process, do you all think, to understand all that? You mentioned that it can be very difficult. So is that everyone's experience, that it's a lot to really navigate and you would appreciate some more guidance? Is that how you feel? Um, I mean, I think at first definitely it was very difficult. Um, after a piece was published in the Louisville Courier Journal that I wrote about poor students needing more help from policymakers. Um, actually, a private college counselor got in touch with me and um, basically guided me through the process or applications. And so I got accepted to Wellesley through QuestBridge, which funded almost 100% of the financial need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and those for low incomes is important, yes. but it's also important, as you were saying, Tasaji, for middle uh, income families as well, that the cost of tuition is rising and rising. And so I want to ask you about that. Uh, the cost of going to college now, it seems like it goes up more and more each year. So does that frighten you about how you might go in with one uh, level of expectation for finances, <laughs> but that could be considerably higher as you continue? Are you concerned about that? And will it affect your choice? on where you attend. Absolutely. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, well, ladies first. <laughs> yes, Lydia. <laughs> it definitely um, puts more pressure on getting that full ride scholarship or just to get scholarships in general. I know that money plays a large factor into where I'm going to school, where I'm where I've been applying and stuff. Um, it's definitely probably the biggest factor yeah. that I'm looking at. So maybe perhaps a state school and not a mm -hmm. private school. I'm right? only applying to state schools. Only applying to state schools. Anyone else want to chime in? Keith, I didn't mean to interrupt you just a minute oh, ago. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, just something like she said, I mean, I'm, I'm going to state school as well, but what about those kids that are going out of state and how, like, you know, somebody won't be, like, law going to Stanford or something like that. It's still something, like, the fastest. It's, it's not going to cover a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to the workplace and just the managing your time and how do you work as a freshman and still trying to stay on top of your book. To, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Yeah, yeah. If you have to also work and then yes. you know there is a big push in Kentucky to finish in and fifteen, you know, to get those fifteen hours mm -hmm. in a semester so that you're actually getting out in a four year period of time and not dragging that out to six. Is that a realistic goal because of finances that to really make sure you have a rigorous schedule enough where you're not in school beyond five, six years? I think it absolutely is um, a realistic goal for many students. The only problem is that um, 
students need to be made aware of their economic situations and what they can do for themselves. Um, I'm currently taking an AP economics course and something that a lot of students are not aware of is fixed interest rates and how mm -hmm. important it is to make sure that you're on one level playing field so that even though inflation is rising as the years go on, your school cost is not. Yeah, so that, that as you said, it's a fixed rate, so it doesn't balloon yes. after a certain period of time that it stays at its current level. So what are the biggest challenges, and you alluded to them earlier about, that you've encountered in applying for college financial aid and just to college in general, Amanda? Um, I think definitely for me, it was just knowing what was out there. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a rural school, school district, so it's a poor area area and um, so it was more difficult to be aware of what was available and to reach beyond um, just the local schools even. Were your school resource counselors helpful or other educators helpful? Um, there was a large push to stay within Kentucky and to not pursue like um, Ivy League schools or higher level schools. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add about that experience of the difficulty and uh, it's navigating those it's waters. been difficult to navigate because there are very there are very few schools that have the same expectations for their scholarships. So at some schools they just award it based on GPA and grade point average, and there's no extra application. And then for some schools there are so many extra applications, and just navigating that mm -hmm. and knowing at what school what do I need, what does each school want? Because there are some schools that with my GPA and um, ACT score that I would get a full ride and then there are other schools that I would just not but I could based on my extracurriculars so just knowing what each school wants from their top scholars. And how soon should you start? Do you wait till you're a high school senior before oh, you start? No. No, and no. what other advice would you give younger students? So no on waiting till you're already a senior to get started. How early should they get started in your opinion? Freshman year. Freshman year. Everybody the consensus freshman year? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay so you heard that mom and dad and student freshman year. What other advice would you give to younger students that you've learned throughout this process? Take the ACT freshman year or even sooner. Take it, take it, take it. Yeah, and practice, <laughs> practice, practice. practice. Yes. So that's good advice. Anyone else? I think be in contact with your guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like form that yes. relationship early. Yeah, relationships are always good. Excellent advice. Because there's definitely a gap between the guidance counselors yeah. and the yeah. students. Yeah. Listen to adults who tell you about scholarships. I know that every single scholarship that I'm applying for, either someone who's a year older than me that applied for it the year before, or um, Rachel, who's the director of the Student Voice Team, sent me one of the ones I'm applying for. I wouldn't have known about them on my own. Yeah, yeah. Well, good advice. Thank you all very much, and we wish you the very best in your college endeavors and beyond. And right now, we're gonna go back to Bill Goodman for the college call-in portion of our program tonight.